Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my recipe for a gluten-free roti. Now this is the perfect type of roti if any of you guys are allergic to gluten or have a gluten intolerance. Now this roti right here resembles more of a sada roti, a pretty thin sada roti at that, or like an Indian chapati. And this is something you guys are truly going to enjoy. It is soft, it is super delicious, and it is the perfect thing to scoop up any of your curries or veggie dishes. So if you want to see how I put it together, keep on watching. Before we get into the recipe, I just wanted to show you the brand of gluten-free flour that I'm using. I'm using the Pillsbury brand, but if you wanted to, you could experiment with any other type of all-purpose gluten-free blend. Now, I'm going to leave some Amazon links in my description box down below so you guys can shop for this and have it sent to your home versus having to go to the grocery store if this is something you don't have on hand. The first step when making this recipe is to put your all-purpose gluten-free flour into your bowl. And all of my ingredients and measurements will be down in the description box below if you guys want to see exactly how I put it together. After you've gone in with your gluten-free flour blend into your bowl, you're going to add in a pinch of salt. And what the salt is going to do is it's going to give it a higher shelf life. You can keep it for much longer in the fridge and it'll also make the roti a little softer. And now I'm going in with a few tablespoons of olive oil. Again, all of my ingredients and measurements will be in the description box down below. And basically what you do once you add in that oil is you want to go ahead and mix it up really well so that flour can be coated with the oil that you just put in. Now after you've gone ahead and mixed in all of your ingredients, you're going to go ahead and stream in a little bit of hot boiling water. The reason why you want to use hot boiling water is so this way you can activate those flours and make them sticky. So this way you can have more of a roti texture when this recipe is done. Now if you were to use cold water, you're going to get a very hard and a very not so soft product. It's not going to be a nice pliable roti like you want in the end. So basically what you want to do is obviously you want to mix it with a spoon because if you were to use your bare hands, you are going to get burned because this is hot boiling water. Now, if you wanted to, you could probably experiment and use some hot boiling milk alongside the water if you wanted to make it a little richer. It totally depends on your own preferences. So I'm using about one and a half cups of that gluten free flour blend. And to that, I'm adding about three fourths a cup to about a cup of that hot boiling water. That'll totally depend on the type or the brand of gluten free flour that you use. And it'll also depend on your humidity or your climate around you. Now what I'm going to basically do is I'm going to mix it until it forms a big crumbly mess almost and then I'm going to allow it to sit for about five to six minutes so this way that flour can absorb some of that water and it won't be as sticky. So after that five to six minutes I'm going to come back and show you guys what it looks like. Remember at this point the dough does not have to be coming together totally. You just want to go ahead and get that water mixed in. Now I don't know if you guys can see but this is what the dough looks like after about five to six minutes and as you guys can see it dried up just a little bit. Now I'm going in with my fingers and I'm going to go ahead and mash it really well and I'm going to knead it for about two minutes, maybe one to two minutes, basically until you get somewhat of a smooth dough. It's not going to be totally smooth like a regular roti dough, but you just want it to be somewhat smooth on the top. And at this point, it should not be sticking too much to your fingers. If it is, you might want to add in a little bit more of that gluten-free flour blend. Now mixing the roti dough is very, very simple. After that, you're basically going to go ahead and break off a ball of the dough and you can make them as big or as small as you want. I recommend making them a little smaller because they're much easier to roll out that way. And basically what you're gonna do is on a heavily floured surface, you're gonna start to roll it out really well. You wanna make sure that there's enough flour on your surface because if there's not, and this starts to stick, it will actually make a very big mess and it will not be pretty. Trust me, I know from experience. So I'm gonna roll it out to about a quarter of an inch thickness to an eighth of an inch thickness. You don't want it too thin or it will not swell up and you also do not want it too thick or else it will just be very doughy. So I've been heating my towel on a medium, medium low heat and you don't wanna cook this on too much of a high heat or else they will burn very fast. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay it down on the pan and you're gonna to continue to move it around with your fingers. Now, if you wanted to, I also wanted to mention that you could have cut out the edges of your roti just to make it a little rounder, but honestly, I like the rustic look and I don't mind it. So after about 15 seconds of being on that hot tower, you're going to go ahead and flip it over. And as you guys can see, the first side, it dried out just a little bit. And again, you want to keep on moving it and rotating it. That's going to ensure that you have a roti that cooks very evenly all around the edges. And you just want to keep moving, keep moving. And then after a while, you can go ahead and flip it again. So this way you can see that the other side dries up a little bit as well. 
Now, after you've cooked your roti for about 20 to 30 seconds on each side and both edges have dried out just a little bit, you're gonna go ahead and get somewhat of like a rack and you're gonna put it on top of your stove and on a high heat, you're gonna put that roti onto that rack. And basically what you're gonna see is that roti will start to puff up and some of them will not puff up perfectly or all the way, but you do want it to puff up just a little bit, even if it bubbles up all around the edges. And this roti is very delicate. It is not really like a sada roti because remember sada roti has all of the glutens in it. But basically, if you see any holes, you could go ahead and press them down with your spatula and it'll help it to puff up even more. And as you guys can see, as I'm pushing it down, the roti is still nice and soft. So once your roti is puffed up or bubbled up a little bit on the heat, you're gonna go ahead and take it off the heat. And then I like to go ahead and brush on a little bit of butter, or you can go ahead and brush on a little bit of ghee or coconut oil or any other type of light tasting oil. It totally depends on your own preferences. And basically from there, you're gonna fold it in half and you're gonna put it into a dish that you've lined with like a tea towel. So this way they can stay nice and soft. And basically I'm gonna continue this process, cook the rest of my rotis and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. So I wanted to show you guys something pretty cool. As you're cooking the roti, sometimes if you, just depending on how you rolled it out, if it's like a perfect dough ball, what's gonna happen is it will start to swell up by itself on the tawa. So that just ensures you don't even have to put it on the rack on your stove. So basically, as you guys can see, it's puffing up by itself. I'm pressing it down just lightly with the spatula and it's gonna puff up perfectly. And again, this is a very delicate roti, so there might be little holes. That's why they all won't puff up 100%. And if you guys wanted the rack that I used in the previous screen, I'm gonna leave some Amazon links in the description box down below so you could purchase one of those as well. It's perfect when you're making the gluten-free rotis, and if you guys check out my solder roti video, I also used it to seke my roti or to puff it up as well. Now another tip when rolling it out, you wanna make sure to use somewhat of a circular motion with your rolling pin. As you guys can see, I'm using one of these mini Indian rolling pins. If you want that link, I'll post it in my Amazon links down below as well. Um, but if you wanted to use just a regular rolling pin, that'll work perfectly. Just make sure that you're using a very even pressure all around the side, so this way not one side is thicker than the other. And one last tip that I have for you guys is when you put it onto this rack to go ahead and puff up, it must be under a high heat. If it is not on a high heat, the roti will not puff up at all and then they will dry out very, very fast. So make sure it is on a high heat. And I want to mention if you do not have an electric stove like I do and you have a gas stove, that's even better because all you do is put the roti directly onto the gas flame and you go ahead and you seke it or let it, let it puff up on that high heat and then you take it off the heat. All right, guys, that is the gluten-free roti. It is as simple and as quick as that. I really enjoyed filming this recipe and giving it to you guys because I know there are a lot of people out there with gluten allergies or gluten intolerances, and some people just want a little bit of a healthier option instead of the normal oil roti or solder roti. And this one is something that you guys will truly, truly enjoy. So as you guys can see, as I rip it open, it is soft, it is beautifully pliable, and it is just the perfect kind of roti to soak up any of those dishes. So if you enjoyed today, go ahead and give this video a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet. And of course, leave all of your amazing comments down below. I hope you all are safe and I hope you all are well. And I'll see you guys again in my next video.